of a master's project, a slightly over-ambitious goal, as I can tell you. But for the test stage, I was imagining myself being in my 50s, at least. So you can imagine how I felt when I got the invitation to speak at this event. I was thrilled. I was flattered. And I was in utmost shock. Where were my 50 years of life experience that we supposed to have to develop an idea worth spreading? So while the world's formula still has to wait a couple of decades, I'm going to share with you today what I learned over the last couple of years attempting to untangle how nature works. What I'm interested in my research is the complexity of sustainability. What does that mean? Let's start with sustainability. You, as representatives of the Generation Y, are among the most sustainability aware people this planet has ever seen. So this topic doesn't need an extensive introduction. You know that we only have this one planet, and in case we want future generations to experience the same quality of life as we do, we need to change our lifestyles. The global population currently consumes 1.7 times the resources the Earth is able to reproduce within the year, with a rising trend. If we want future generations to not have to pay back for our overuse today, we need to act. Now, I'm sure you're not only very much aware of that fact, you're probably most willing to even contribute your share. You might recycle your plastic, your bottles, maybe even your clothes. You might take the bike to work, and you're probably willing to invest the occasional extra euro in case it really makes a difference. But you might also know situations like the one when you've been to a public bathroom, you just washed your hands, you turn around, and you face a choice between an electric hand dryer and a paper towel dispenser. And you stand there being confused. You can either waste a little bit of energy or sacrifice a tree in the forest, and you resort to the convenient wipe on the trousers. <laughs> yes, sustainability is complex. But that does by no means imply that you have to freeze like a rabbit in the headlights and leave others to steer sustainable development. The complexity of the topic actually provides a great opportunity in general and for you in particular to steer positive change. To understand why that is the case, we need to look a bit more into detail into the topic of complexity. A simple yet quite insightful example of a complex system is a flock of birds. What you see is a beautiful choreography for a dance in the air. The performers, a couple of thousand birds who don't have a choreographer. Without any steering mind, any verbal communication or any training, they manage to never stop flying, to neither crash into each other or the tower and to, just as a byproduct, display this beautiful swarm dynamics for us to enjoy. The key to their success lies in their complex behavior. And complex does by no means mean complicated. Complexity is actually often quite simplistic. To construct a flock of birds, all you need is a couple of birds. We call them multiple agents. You teach them three dynamic interaction rules. The first one, don't crash into your neighbor. The second one, fly in the average direction of your neighbors. And the third, if in doubt, steer towards the center of the flock rather than leaving the flock. And with only these three rules, the swarm dynamics we've just seen emerge. And as this doesn't need any choreographer, we call this a self-organizing process. So, multiple agents, dynamic interactions, and self-organizing processes. These are the key ingredients of a complex system. Now, what does that have to do with sustainability? Sustainable development is based on the long-term persistence of our planet, including all its inhabitants. And while human beings are certainly a little more eccentric than the average bird, life in its holistic sense can be understood as one complex system. Seven and a half billion people certainly qualify as multiple agents. We talk to each other, we meet, we gather, we haggle, we bargain, we trade, we love, we hate, we sleep with each other, and we influence our lives in a multitude of ways. Our interactions trigger self-organizing processes. We form partnerships, families, or circle of friends. We organize ourselves in initiatives or companies. 
And we even create political and legal frameworks where we write down the fundamentals of how we want to live together. And if this wasn't complex enough, the human system is even embedded in the natural world, which provides energy, food, and resources. So life is one big, complex system. Decisions can trigger chain reactions and have wide-ranging effects. So it is obviously not straightforward if the choice between an electric hand dryer or the paper towel dispenser, what kind of impact it has on the global energy balance, the deforestation in the rainforest, the overall consumption of hand lotion, and the overall trajectory of the socio-ecological system. Obviously, the socio-ecological system is more complex than a flock of birds. Nevertheless, both exhibit the key characteristics of complex systems. And there is actually a lot to learn from studying how a flock of birds navigates certain challenges. Imagine you're a bird. You are happily flying with your flock, and you as a group have decided to pursue a little more sustainable lifestyle. Not all of you are quite sure where this is heading, but you're very committed. You're the little orange bird, and you actually have found a way to live more sustainably, which is referenced by the orange dot. What do you do? You turn around. What happens? Nothing. At first. Remember, one of the three interaction rules was fly in the average direction of your neighbors. Simulation studies have shown that it actually only takes a small fraction of a flock of birds to change, to steer the whole swarm in another direction. So once your neighbor realizes the new direction too, you're there. The whole swarm is heading where you want to go. Now what does that imply? In case you know the right direction, do what is right. There is actually a sustainability example where this worked remarkably well, and this is the case of the hole in the ozone layer. The ozone layer surrounds the Earth and protects it from UV radiation, which can cause severe sunburn and skin cancer. In the 80s, it has been detected that chlorofluorocarbons, which have been used widely in refrigerators, for example, can transform into radicals and attack the ozone layer. And from the efforts of dedicated individuals over concerted lobbying of NGOs like Greenpeace, only 15 years later, governments banned the use of chlorofluorocarbons worldwide. It will till, still take a couple of decades until the hole will have regrown fully, but is already visibly going back. And all of this only because a couple of individuals knew what was the right thing to do, talked about it, and steered the direction of the flock. So, Changing the direction of the flock is possible through individual behavioral change or through external regulations like the eventual CFC ban. But sometimes you might face a situation where you have a couple of choices and don't quite know what is right. This is a situation that might occur when you go grocery shopping. Think about the situation you want to get a package of milk and you want to make a sustainable choice. And you end up in front of the milk shelf. And now you can choose between the green package and the package that says eco on the cover and the package that has a happy cow on the cover and the package from the farm just outside your city and the package with additional vitamins and the package which is carbon neutrally produced and the package which simply costs three times as much as the others. And you just don't know. What's the way out? Demand transparency. In the case of groceries, this has actually started to take the right direction. There is a multitude of labels out there certifying different sustainability criteria. You can download apps on your smartphone and scan the barcode of your product to find out how it has been produced and if it fills, fulfills different sustainability criteria. Nevertheless, getting reliable information about the sustainability background of your products remains complicated. Dare to ask, dare to know, Dare to challenge your vendor, your milk producer, your consumer association, yes, even your governments. Lobby for transparent and reliable information. Make sure you get enough information to be able to steer your flock in the right direction. Now, sometimes you might not be faced with a question between a couple of different brands of milk, but with a question which doesn't have a clear answer yet. Think about the case of individual mobility. All of us know that the future will be low emission mobility. 
But we as a global society don't have a clue yet if this will mean electric batteries, wood gas, biofuels, hydrogen, or in an innovation which we don't even see coming on the horizon yet. We have a couple of ideas which we are currently steering towards to. But it might very well be the case that at some point of time we find out that what we actually have to do is a 180 degree turn. Now what does that imply? Embrace uncertainty. A flock of birds is actually remarkably well prepared for this situation. They simply turn around, quickly and without much hassle. They're very simple interaction rules. Don't crash into each other, fly in the average direction of your neighbors, and if in doubt, don't leave the flock. Doesn't only prevent them from crashing into a church tower, it also allows them to quickly change direction in case they suffer an external disturbance or discover a new source of food. They are flexible, they are open, they can embrace change, and they are prepared for uncertainty. So three rules we can learn from a flock of birds. In case you know what is the right thing to do, do what is right and talk about it, make sure others find out and find the right direction too. In case you don't know what is right, try to find out the right direction and demand transparency. And third, in case this information is simply not available, remain flexible, open for innovations and behavioral change and prepare for uncertainty. We, as human beings, we are not reliant on these three simple rules. Our intellect and our ability to project into the future allows us to rationally decide which trajectory we want to go down, a sustainable one for, to allow future generations to be able to thrive on this planet. Nevertheless, these three rules can give a good guideline on what to do as an individual to steer positive change. You, as an individual, you can do what is right. In case you're wearing pretty trousers and you don't want to uh, clean your hands on your trousers, you should use the electric hand dryer, even if the paper towels are recycled. Cutting the tree, transporting it to the factory, producing the wood, filling the paper towel dispensers and managing the waste have a larger negative environmental impact than the 20 seconds of hot air. These are results from so-called ecological footprint analyses, where the negative environmental impacts of different products are compared. You should demand transparency about these values for your favorite everyday products to make sure that you can make an informed choice. And you have to embrace uncertainty. Who would have ever thought that an electric device can be more environmentally friendly than a recycled paper towel? Now, obviously, your choice of hand drying technique has a minor impact on the global carbon and energy balance compared to actions such as living car free, avoiding airplane travel or switching to a plant based diet. And it is very important when tuning your everyday behavior to not lose sight of these big and large impact actions. Nevertheless, also small actions matter. They matter to effectively put external regulations into force. They matter to remind you of your ability and your responsibility to create positive change. And they ensure the flexibility of the planet and the overall resi resilience of our systems. Luckily, your reach goes even further than your personal life. You can choose to buy products from brands which put effective sustainability policies into action and communicate them transparently. You can choose an employer who values sustainability and is open for an uncertain future. You can vote for governments who foster transparent and reliable information and education about complex issues for the public. And you can invest your savings in green bonds because without funding, harmful activities will cease to exist. Sustainability is not a hipster topic. It is inevitable. Eventually, those systems which are sustainable and resilient will be the ones which persist. And no government, no company and no single human being will be able to thrive on a planet whose resources have been so overused that it has to regenerate for decades, which is why all of us have to act. So don't become discouraged by the complexity of the topic. Don't become discouraged by the vast amount of information and the, little, the vast amount of choices and the little amount of non-ambiguous information. Make sustainability a lifestyle. Choose those areas of sustainability which have the largest impact and which you really care about and make sure to steer your flock in the right direction. Actively seek opportunities to do the right things 
demand transparency and foster reliable information, and remain open, flexible, scan the horizons for the necessity to change your behavior or for new innovations and embrace uncertainty. Make sustainability an everyday action. Be the little bird, orange bird every day. Thanks.